Welcome to this Danfoss Drives software tools video. In this video, we'll discuss Vacon NC Drive, a Windows PC to drive software interface tool. We'll show how to connect to a drive and a demonstration using NC Drive. This will include how to download the application, the steps to establish a connection, how to read and write to a connected drive, and how to save and load parameter files. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. NC Drive is a free, fully featured Windows-based software tool used for commissioning, parameterization, monitoring, and diagnosing Vacon NX family drive products. To download NC Drive, go to www.danfossdrives.com, then click Service and Support, click Downloads, click Drives under the Business Unit, then click My Drive Suite. Next, click Open My Drive Suite, then scroll down and find Vacon NC Drive and click on the download icon. Vacon NC Drive is compatible with the following drive products. All frame sizes of the Vacon NXS series air-cooled drives, all frame sizes of the Vacon NXP air and liquid-cooled drives, and the Vacon NXP system drives. Hello everybody, Jeff Olson here with Danfoss Drives. Today I have a video for you on the Vacon NC Drive software program. NC Drive is a tool that can be used to directly connect to the Vacon NX series drives. The software allows the user to program the drive on the fly while using the PC and the software as an alternative to the keypad. That does prove to be a very useful function when programming the NX series drives simply because the user can get a bigger picture of all the parameters. It's much more user friendly than using the keypad on this particular drive. So I would highly recommend looking at this software if you're going to go program an NX series drive. It also allows you to save parameter files and configuration files so you can back up all the drives and later restore them if you had to replace the drive or just simply have backups. You can also work offline to pre-program a drive if you will. You would create a parameter file where you would set all the parameters as necessary and then later make a live connection to that drive and load that information to it. The software also lets you monitor values. We'll take a look at that. It has local PC control functionalities for setup and testing drives where you want to control it from the PC rather than the I.O. points. And then there's also some additional stuff such as fault logging that we can take a look at. So before we get into all the main functionality, I'm going to show you how to establish a connection with the software. At this point, I have my software open. We'll notice here that we are offline, so there is no communication occurring between the drive and the software right now. The first step is to connect the drive physically to the PC running the software. So if we take a look at this image here, I have shown that we have a connection with a serial cable, plugs in behind the keypad, where the keypad plugs in, and the other end goes to your PC. Older computers would have an onboard serial port. It's not very common anymore, but if you are connecting to a PC with a serial port, it would be important to use this special yellow cable here. Danfoss sells this cable. It's part number 181B0350, and it's referred to as the communication programming cable. This cable has isolation, so it does provide isolation between the PC and the drive so you won't damage your computer. In the event that you do not have a serial port you're connecting to, and the more likely event would be that you're using some sort of USB to serial converter. So here I have a USB to 232 conversion tool. Once you plug that device into the USB port of your computer, it will be assigned a COM port, and we have to match that COM port in the software in order to establish the communication. So let's take a look at that. You have to open up your device manager after you connect the converter. In this instance, I am looking at the COM ports, and my converter has adopted COM port 8. When I go into the software, you're going to want to go to Tools, Options, click on the Communication tab, and here I leave this 232, and I would select the COM port that the computer assigned it. Again, COM8 was what my device manager showed, so I'm going to match that. And I normally, just as uh, a standard practice, increase the baud rate all the way up to the highest point uh, in an attempt to speed up the communication. So we'll apply those settings and say OK. And at that point, if the cable is physically connected, 
you should be able to go online. Before I do that, I'm going to talk about uh, how this software operates. So you cannot create a parameter file or start from scratch without anything. So the first time that you connect a drive to this software, it needs to learn the, the drive firmware. So that will actually happen as soon as you go online and you make a connection to that drive, it will upload that drive firmware or database to your software so then it recognizes it. That is not going to happen in my event because I've already established a connection to this drive here. But I just wanted to point that out. The first time it will take longer to connect because it has to learn the drive. So I am connected and I'm going to go ahead and go online here. It's uh, asking me if I want to save changes because I have an old file open. I'm going to say no. And anyhow, I'm going to go online and at this point establishing live communication with the drive. It's uploading the parameters from the drive. Anytime you click online or use this upload button, they are essentially the same thing. What will happen is it will connect to the live drive and the parameters that are set in that drive will now upload and be reflected here in my parameter window. So anything that I had changed in here when I was offline would essentially be overwritten by what was in the drive when I went online. I'll talk about how to actually make changes to an offline file and write them to a drive later but it is important to know when you go online anything that you have here on your parameter window will be overwritten by the live drive. Just to give you an example what I was talking about uh, a little earlier when I said that the drive needs to load uh, or understand the firmware version. If I go to the drive menu, I can actually change the application on this drive as well. Um, like I said earlier, I'm connected to a Vacon NXP series drive. It is running what we call the all-in-one application. And the all-in-one application actually consists of seven predefined applications we'll see here. So when I open this window here, here are my seven predefined applications. The basic application, standard, local remote, multi-step, PID control, multi-purpose application, and finally the pump and fan. Currently, the highlighted in blue application, multi-purpose is active, but I can change that. Uh, this video is not really focusing on each of these applications in detail, uh, but I will point out that an application such as the basic will have much less parameter visibility to the user than one such as the multi-purpose which really lets you manipulate any parameter in this drive. So some applications are more basic than others and hide parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to the PID control application. Again this isn't really a programming focused video so it doesn't matter which one I choose but we will see when I do that that the drive will restart and the software will want to upload this application data from the drive. So we'll see that happen. It's asking if I'm sure I want to change the application. I'm going to say yes. And right now the drive is actually powering down and it's going to power up and restart itself. In turn we're going to end up coming offline here briefly. So that is actually happening now. I went offline. It's asking if I want to upload the parameters and when I say yes it's going to go online and read from this drive the application and the current settings. So that that will happen now. And I'm really just changing this application right now again to show you that the drive needs to take some time to generate or create the application in the software. So this is the window that you would see the first time you connected to a drive regardless of what application is chosen. And you'll see that we are online and now I have the PID control act, uh, application active. So those are the parameters we'll be viewing. So at this point, now that I have a live connection, any changes I make to a parameter will automatically be reflected in the connected drive because we're online. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for an example. So I'm going to go in here and tree out my menu group 2 parameters and I'll go into my basic parameters group here and I'm going to change the minimum frequency just for an example. You can use the keypad or mouse clicks here, either way works. I'm going to go ahead and enter a value of 20 hertz in here and press the enter key to accept that value. And we see that there's some activity occurring. That parameter was written to the connected drive, so that change was made. Again, anything you do while you're online um, is going to be reflected in the connected drive. I can save this parameter file here. 
and it's going to be a .par file like I mentioned earlier. I'm just going to go ahead and name this. We'll call it the Vacon test drive and I will save it here. So now this parameter file is currently saved. Now next time I open up this parameter file and, and connect to a drive I will not have to go through that process where it learns the database again. It'll already be uh, embedded in the software. So at this point I'm going to go ahead and close the software down here and I'm going to go to my spot where I saved the file and I'll go ahead and open this file software will open back up it's giving me a note here telling me that the min and max limits are not available while offline I'll accept that and at this point if I go online again I want to point out if I go online at this point it's going to update my parameter list here or my parameter window that I'm viewing with all the parameters that are active in that connected drive so in the event that I wanted to go and use this file and pre-program a drive if you will change everything to the way that I'd like it to be and then later go and connect and write that information I would want to remain offline so stay in the offline state go through set all the parameters how you like them I could save that file then again if I would like to however once I've done that I go over here and I use the download icon where the arrow is showing that the information is going to the drive so if I want to write this file to the drive I use the download button when I'm offline so I can do that and we'll see what will happen here and now whatever parameters were currently set in this parameter file here will write to the drive we are talked about live programming of the drive when you have a live connection saving parameter files like I've just done and then later writing that parameter file to a connected drive so working offline and we'll take a look at some of these other functions here we can monitor values so if we look at these icons up here I have a parameter window which is what we're currently looking at we have the operating window I'll go ahead and open that up and the operating window appeared here and this is where I can do the local PC control as soon as I click PC control any connected IO will be ignored and I have local control here via this little control panel I can start stop reset alarms command the drive to run in reverse change the speed and also coast to a stop if I'd like so I'm going to go ahead and bring up one more window here we also have the monitoring window I'll open that up now the monitoring window is going to let us view all different types of parameters and values uh, in this scope type format here so we can look at the actual unit uh, the actual value of these and we can also watch traces so I have went ahead and set a couple of these up to save a little time you can name them whatever you'd like then the type of data here it can be a value a parameter the reference you could log uh, the depression or certain buttons um, so there's a lot of things that you can log here I've just went ahead and left the type value and then you choose the signal name I have selected output frequency and motor speed there's a ton of th things that you can log here I've chose two that are going to be easy for me to manipulate so we can watch them you can choose a minimum and a maximum scaled value for those or you can press the auto key and it'll auto scale for you I have actually selected a minimum of 0 to a maximum of 60 Hertz and 0 to 1900 RPM for my scaling I can actually start the logging and right now nothing's occurring because there is no uh, output frequency or motor speed you can see it's remaining at 0 here and I'm actually logging 0 if I come down here to the PC control and select this button I'm going to go ahead and give it some speed here and give it a start command and we should see that we start logging and that's exactly what happened here so now I have a red and a blue trace that are logging they're monitoring uh, the Hertz and RPM of the motor if I change those you'll see that it will reflect that on the fly 
So my actual values here went down and my plotter also uh, reflected that. So this is a very useful tool for troubleshooting when you want to see a lot of different things at the same time and try to find out what's going on. This can definitely be helpful. So that's just a little bit about the monitoring window here. Um, I should also say that you can go into the settings tab here and change your sampling interval. I have chosen to continuous log. Uh, you can also log on a trigger. So there's a lot of uh, flexibility here with this tool. So I'm going to go ahead and close these two out. Again, I can stop the drive here or I can give it a co-stop, which I just did. And also we have some indication lights down here to let you know what the drive is doing when you have a live connection. Ready, run, fault, and alarm. If I start the drive, we're going to see that the run has lit up. If I stop the drive, we'll come away with that. And I'm going to generate a fault here shortly as well to show you how that works. I'm going to close these two windows. And that is this last icon up here. It's your diagnostic window. I can look at active faults and fault history. So I'm going to go ahead and start the drive so we can see that there's some information uh, populated in here when I generate an alarm. I'm going to generate an alarm by opening up a safety contact, but before I do that, I'm going to start the drive and run it. And now I'll generate the alarm. And there's the code 51 external fault from me opening the safety. You can see I had 78.9 volts in the motor at the time. 170 milliamps of current. I was running at a speed of 20 hertz, 3.9% motor torque, and 1.3% motor power. Any of these other variables uh, may be populated indicating direction, if it was ready to run, in a fault, uh, warning, etc. So there's a lot of good information here. So I can look at the active faults. If I were to clear that fault now, we would actually see that it goes away. So moving over to the fault history, it would remain in the log. So there's the last alarm that occurred. Uh, Vacon NC Drive. It's a very useful program. It really makes programming these drives a lot more user friendly. Um, you can live program a drive. You can save parameters, set up files, and you can uh, write offline files to drives. We have these monitoring values that are nice here and uh, the local PC control. So I would recommend just playing around with the software a little bit more and uh, become more familiar with it. Uh, hopefully, this video was helpful and thanks for watching. Thank you for viewing. We hope this information has been helpful. Dan Foss Drives can provide additional technical support, parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call 1-888-DANFOSS or 1-888-326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ts.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after-sales service, the email address is drives.ts.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is also available on our website at www.danfossdrives.com. For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com. Thanks again.